to the Ministry of Technology went Colonel Frank Borman, a most welcome visitor to Britain. For the minister, Mr. Ben, the moon man had brought a model of a lunar landing craft. The colonel and his family were making a three-day visit to this country, a visit which allowed us to leave him in no doubt about our admiration for the awesome journey he and two fellow spacemen had made to the moon and back. On to Lancaster House. It was a tight schedule, but so many wanted to meet and honor the brave American. The Foreign Secretary, Mr. Michael Stewart, and Mr. David Bruce, U.S. Ambassador in London, greeted the Air Force pilot whose name has earned a place in history. The occasion was a reception in his honor. And so to Downing Street to meet Mr. and Mrs. Wilson. A Downing Street packed with press men and people eager to see one of the men who had made Christmas 1968 so unforgettable. Frank Borman, the man from space, showed he was very much down to earth when he skipped officialdom and walked across to the crowd to make a few personal greetings. Colonel Borman already stood high in public esteem. His informality shot that regard higher than even his moonship. The spaceman's unscheduled stop meant he was ten minutes late for his meeting with the Prime Minister, but this was a day for a hero to be honoured by all. Colonel Borman will probably never go into space again. At his own request, he has been assigned to groundwork. He will help plan the way to the stars for the spacemen who will follow where he led. With Mr. and Mrs. Wilson stood the Bormans, a family upon whom science had bestowed immortality. To Colonel and Mrs. Borman, their two sons, Frederick and Edwin, Britain had shown how welcome they were.